this Etsy seller has 71,296 reviews. Look at this. They have to be making $20,000 a month, like easy. Hey guys, it's Charlie. So uh, recently I was on my phone and I was browsing Etsy and I came across a shop with a lot of reviews and they were selling clip art and I thought that was pretty cool. I was scrolling through their photos and I noticed it said generated by AI and immediately my mind was like, Poof, like it blew up a little bit, but I was also a little let down, not gonna lie, because it's AI generated. But it got me thinking, wait a minute, we should try to put together an AI generated clip art bundle to see just how easy it is. So I thought it'd be a fun little experiment and um, yeah, I was gonna take you guys with me, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe before we get started because a lot of you are not subscribed, apparently. But uh, you know, either way, I am just grateful that you guys watch my content. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started on this video and make some clip art together. All right, so I'm on Etsy and I went to the shop that I was talking to you guys about, and I'm not obviously going to sell any AI-generated clip art. That's not my thing but I can totally see why people are doing this. It's very convenient. I mean, you're using artificial intelligence to do things smarter and faster to make money. I mean, what's not to like about that, right? But again, it's not my thing, but I'm definitely interested in trying it out to see how easy it is. It's funny because like when you look at the art, you can definitely tell it's AI generated now that I'm like looking at it closer. And I think that we can easily do this using Mid Journey, honestly. I think we're gonna need Mid Journey, Adobe Photoshop, and maybe like an AI upscaler, that's about it. I wonder what the dimensions are of each image. So 300 DPI, all right, cool. So this one is images average five to seven inches at greatest measurement. Okay, that's not, that's very vague. Kind of gives me a good idea of what I need to do. So let's go ahead and hop over to Discord. Introducing our esteemed sponsor for today's video, Aplique.com, the ultimate solution for all your print on demand needs. At Aplique, they revolutionized the industry by offering a comprehensive range of printing options, including DTF, DTG and screen printing, all without the burden of a monthly fee. And unlike other POD companies, Aplique stands out by providing you the freedom to choose the printing method that best suits your requirements. Aplique goes above and beyond to enhance your brand's identity and premium feel. They offer private labeling services, allowing you to personalize your products and make a lasting impression in the market. Whether you are embarking on a new clothing brand venture or conducting print tests on different garments, Aplique has got you covered from top to bottom. To take advantage of this incredible opportunity, simply Click on the link provided in the description below and sign up with a plea. And I have Mid Journey up right now and let's try to make something. So I'm gonna type in my prompt, imagine, and then let's do the top one, imagine prompt. And what are we gonna make? Maybe we will make, I've already made dragons in the past messing around. So maybe we'll try like crystal skulls. So I'm gonna let this render and I'm thinking I'll probably do like 10 images per bundle. So like if I were to sell this, bundle it up, it would probably be 10 individual images. But yeah, I mean, I have to see what it's going to look like first. See, it's not on a dark background though. I don't know if I want that. I kind of want it on a lighter background. So we might need to change that up. Maybe I need to put clip art. So let's try this again. But I'll, and then this time I'll specify um, clip art. Those are cool, but not really what I'm going for. And then we need, like I said, like 10 of them. So we'll have to like download them, upscale them and put them in Photoshop, delete the background, make sure they're the proper resolution, of course. And yeah, that's gonna be the best plan of action. So here's what it generated. And I can already tell you this top left one's gonna have some issues. So I'm not going to use that one, but I will use the top right and then the bottom two probably. We'll try those out. So I'm gonna go ahead and upscale two, three and four, and then we'll do another prompt and we'll try to come up with some more crystals. And I think that I need to be more specific with my prompt as well. So let's do imagine prompt again. And then um, skulls made out of crystals, unreal. There we go, let's try that out and see what it does. Just out of that one render though, we got three different skulls that we can use potentially. I don't even know, we might find other ones that we like more, but we really won't know until we look at the other ones. See, these ones have more than one. I'm not sure if I wanna go for that or not, but we'll see. And the bottom left is actually really cool. So I'm gonna use those ones, so. We'll do two, so that's one, two, three, so we'll do three as well. I need to be more specific with my prompt again, so let's do imagine prompt, and then crystal, or skull, with crystals growing, clip art, white background. Let's try this. I'm happy with what we got so far though. Not bad, not a bad start at all. See, I like this other one better. These ones are so much cooler, and I like every single one of these, so we're gonna go 
one, two, three. And I'll probably just do one more set just for this video because I don't want it to like drag on or anything like that. I'm not sure how this background is going to work though. I think it's going to have a little bit of issues trying to delete that, but we'll find out. This is another good set right here. So I'm going to use all these probably. What I did is I set up this folder called AI Clip Art. And then inside that folder, I'm going to do renders. And then I'm also going to do upscaled renders as well. So in the renders folder, I'm going to just drag these over. The only thing is these top ones don't really match the aesthetic of the other ones. So I don't know if I'm going to use these uh, first versions, but we'll see. And what I want to do is I'm going to open this app called uh, Topaz Gigapixel AI. And you guys can buy this for like a hundred bucks if you want to get it. But it basically allows you to upscale images really easily. So what I'm going to do is change my folder to list so I can see these a little easier. And I'm just going to drag all of them into um, the document. And it's going to basically upscale every single one of them one by one. And then we're going to be able to save them all into a destination. So the destination folder um, for this is going to be upscaled renders. And you can see the difference in size, right? Like this is 1024 by 1024, and it's going to get upscaled to six, uh, 6068 by 6068, which is insane. That's really good. And um, I'm going to go save 11 images, and then it's going to ask for a directory. So let's go ahead and find the directory real quick. And it's going to be upscaled renders. Open that. There you go. And it's basically going to upscale every single one of them and save it. And um, each photo is going to be saved individually, basically, and they have to render individually. So it does take a little bit of time, but be patient. It's totally worth it. We already have 11 photos, by the way. I didn't even realize that. So they're all right here. And now what I'm going to do is uh, close this and let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. OK, so I have all the images in Photoshop now. I basically just dragged them all into Photoshop and it opened automatically. And I need to figure out a, the best way to remove the background. And what I'm thinking I'm going to try to use is a magic eraser. So I'm just going to unlock the background by clicking this little lock and let's go ahead and make this full size. And what I'm going to do is use the magic eraser and just try to get rid of the background the best I can. It's definitely not going to do the best job. I can tell you that right now. Before I delete the background, what I want to do is add a solid color fill below it so I can kind of see if there's any imperfections and you'll see what I'm saying in a second. And then we'll duplicate this in case we mess up and let's go to the magic eraser. And let's turn off anti-alias and I think I'm going to set the tolerance to maybe 10 first and see what that does. Yeah, that's not good at all. Let's try 20 and see what that does. That is much better. This is fine. What I'll probably end up doing is taking my eraser tool, my regular eraser tool and getting rid of any spots that don't look right. And we might even be able to duplicate it one more time and bring out a little bit of clarity. So I'm going to add a camera raw filter and bring out some detail and maybe we'll be able to actually delete everything without having to erase anything at all. So now if I show you the before and after, you'll see the big difference, right? This is like very muted and like very low contrast. And this one's definitely a lot more punchy. It might help with the background removal or it might make it worse. We'll find out right now. OK, it's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to keep this the way it is. And we're just going to mask out certain parts that we don't want. So like, for example, I'm not going to keep this little spot right here doesn't need to be there. I'm just going to clean it up before we save it pretty much. If you guys are actually serious about doing this, I would definitely spend a lot of time cutting out the background. Now what I'm going to do is just hide the background. We could delete everything. All right, now I'm going to go to file export and then quick export as and that's going to ask you to save it somewhere. So we're going to make a new folder just for these. So I'm creating a new folder called Crystal Skulls. I'm going to hit create and now I'm going to name this Skull 001. And that's pretty much the titling structure that I'm going to go with for every single skull that I save as a quick export. That way, when people open it up, they can see it numbered nicely and they can kind of refer back to a number. If they have issues with a specific number, they can say, hey, Charlie, I'm having issues with skull 005 or whatever. It doesn't matter. Right. So save that. And then let's go to the other one here. We have 11 of these, so we have to do this for 11 more. OK, it's going to take some time. All right, on to the next. I'm going to add a solid color background again, and I'm a little bit more confident this time because I kind of know what works and I'm going to apply this camera off filter to bring out some details. And it already kind of remembered the last settings that I had, which is great. And now we could just delete the background and I don't like that. So I'm going to tweak the settings a little bit more. Let's do 25 eh, maybe like 12. That looks a lot better. I'm not going to like pixel peep on these ones, but yeah, just make sure like you get all of the little parts that are not perfect and hide the background and just quick export it. So file uh, export quick export as PNG. And then this one is going to be school 
zero, zero, two. And now we are on to the next. So let's see how easy this one's gonna be. I feel like this one's gonna be a challenge for sure. And then we'll apply that same camera raw filter. Yeah, that one's tough, but you know what? It's not bad. So again, file, export, quick export as PNG. And we're gonna name this skull zero, zero, well, capital S actually, that's important. <laughs> 003. There you go. I'm going to finish all these and then I'm going to show you guys how we can make a cover photo for the Etsy listing if you guys were to make your own Etsy listing. So that's going to be fun. But uh, yeah, this part's boring anyway. So I'll see you guys after. I just saved my last one. And what I'm going to do is just go back to this Etsy listing and copy this photo over. And that's what we're going to use for our document size. So now that I copy this, I should be able to go in Photoshop, go file new. And then you can see that it actually copies the dimensions in Photoshop. So that's kind of cool. All right, so I just pasted my photo into this new document and it is the exact size, which is great. And now that we have all the skulls saved in a folder, we can use those for the cover art, kind of like what they did here. So let's go ahead and go to dafont.com real quick and just find a really nice font that kind of fits the vibe of this, uh, I guess you can say crystal skull pack, whatever. Maybe a gothic style font. So let's just type in crystal skull maybe something more playful too see like this one right here in the middle uh or i guess alice in wonderland would be nice too i really like this one right here it's called black uh chancery i don't know if that's the right way of saying that but we're going to use this one because it actually fits the vibe i know i'm just kind of being lazy about finding a font but obviously spend more time than me <laughs> so now that we have that we can go ahead and install it and then just hide this photo and i'm going to invert the background and i'm going to go to texture labs real quick to find a paper texture these are free to use, which is awesome. Brady from Texture Labs, I always promote his stuff because he's just super good at what he does. And these are all free, like you can't beat it. I'm gonna download the extra large version so the texture is really nice and crisp. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This one's actually nice too though. You could spend some time on this website, be careful, trust me. I kinda like the textured version though. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one, drag it into place and resize it. Yeah, see this one looks nice. And then let's go ahead and press Command L, bring up the levels a little bit. Not too much though. You don't wanna like ruin the integrity of the, the texture. Before I even import the skulls, what I'm gonna do is press T on my keyboard and just start typing out the name. So crystal skulls, sort of like that. So now I'm gonna search for the font real quick and then it's right there, cool. And then let's just scale this up quite a bit. Crystal skulls, yay. <laughs> We already have our AI art. Look at this, guys. It's so easy. Honestly, it's kind of too easy. But, you know, that's a different topic. I think I'm going to separate these, though, to give it a little bit more of a design aesthetic. Maybe have them crossing. It's kind of cool. And then maybe on the left here, we can just type in clip art. Is that two words? Shit, I don't even know. I'll be honest with you. We could maybe just do 300 DPI. That's fine. I think maybe all lowercase for this looks kind of nice. So I'm also thinking maybe we can take one of the skulls and use that inside the text so it has more of like a, like kind of like a texture, but I'm not sure quite yet. Maybe we'll try taking this one real quick and then put that inside of the text. See? Kind of nice. I don't know. So maybe we'll duplicate the text, convert that to a smart object, fill it with black, and then do some sort of drop shadow. It needs a different color on the inside, actually, now that I look at it. Maybe a bevel and emboss. See, I don't even know what I want to do with it. I'm just kind of winging it right now. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So many options. That kind of looks nice. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know right now. See, I feel like I need to separate 300 DPI because it's a completely different size and do that separately. That's kind of what I'm feeling right now. So I, I'm just dragging all of those PNG photos that I have saved in that folder into Photoshop. And I will say this, I did not cut the backgrounds out perfectly. And I only did about nine of them because some of them I didn't really like, to be honest with you. So, and I'm just gonna randomly add them all around. So this one maybe go on the top left. I don't know how big to make them. So I'm just gonna like randomly distribute them. Some of them can actually peek out too. Like we can have this one, you know, going off the canvas a little bit. We kind of have to figure out the sizing cause now it's a little cramped. I mean, obviously we're doing this quick too. So that does factor into it because you'd obviously want to spend a lot more time on this and I'm trying to rush through it. So again, that does make a big difference. You definitely want to spend some time doing this. If you look at the reference photo, they just slapped the title. So it obviously doesn't have to be that special. So this will probably work. I still think it could be a lot more legible. For some reason, it's just the text is getting lost for me. And maybe that's because I'm trying to complicate it. And maybe I just need to make the text just one color possibly. Or let me try something else. Let's do a filter gallery effect. 
I don't know if this is going to work or not. And try a stamp with some grain. See, I like that more. Automatically, that fixed my problem. And if we want to, we can even group all the skulls and then change the blend if on them to make them blend a little bit more to the white. Don't go too crazy with this. I don't like that. A little bit goes a long way. We could do the same thing with the text. That looks super cool. There you go. Definitely sloppy, but it's okay. We could probably even throw some smaller ones in there, but we can just have one peeking out right here on the corner so it doesn't look so plain. Do one right here too. I'm just using the same skull. <laughs> Done. All right, cool. So we have a cover. So I'm just going to go file, export, quick export as. And in that same AI clip art folder, I'm going to name this uh, Crystal Skull Etsy Cover. There we go. So now we have the Etsy cover and we have all the skulls. What did that take? Like 30, 40 minutes tops? Like that is not hard. And you can upload this pack, sell it for like three, four bucks. And imagine making like, imagine making 70,000 sales. And I'm not going to do the math in my head because I'm terrible at math. But let's go see what the other people are charging real quick. And we'll do some quick math. So they are charging. Let me see. That's a whole bundle though. $1.96, but it's on sale. So let's just pretend for a second that we were selling ours for $3.27, right? So $3.27, and let's say we sold, uh, I don't know, 2,000 in one month, which is pretty good. That would be over $6,500, and that's only one pack, okay? Imagine having 100 different packs on one store, and you were selling them constantly, so you can potentially triple this. So if you times it by three, that's $19,000 right there. So you guys see where the math comes in? And that's going to greatly depend on how big your store is, uh, if you're paying for ads and how you actually design your covers. Like, obviously, I just rush mine. But if you actually spent a lot of time, I can see you actually um, selling a lot more just because you spent more time and obviously enticing people to buy by including a lot more for a lower price. Like if this person's only including 11 or 12, include 20 to make your store look better, if that makes sense. But other than that, um, maybe capitalizing on what they're missing out on. And they also have the disclosure that it is AI artwork. So you can also do that if you wanted to. But um, and I think they are showing that it's a transparent background as well. So, yeah, you can go a step further, include all these different photos. But clearly this store is doing something right because they have 71,000 reviews insane i don't know what they're doing but they're doing something right i think what we just proved is that it's fairly easy to make clip art using ai obviously that's an obvious thing right but the real question is how easy it is to actually sell the clip art on etsy because that's a whole different ball game if you guys enjoyed the video consider subscribing and smash that like button and also um, don't forget i just released my mastering merch design course so if you guys want to learn how to design merch um, you guys can definitely click on that link and sign up today and start learning immediately. And if you want to print any merch, definitely check out a pleak. But my name is Charlie Pangus. I'll catch you guys in the next one.